Hello, welcome to Beginning Engineers. Today I'm going to be talking about the principles and practice of engineering exam. Certify your career. What is the principles and practice of engineering exam? Also called the PE exam for short. The principles and practice of engineering exam tests for a minimum level of competency in a particular engineering discipline. It is designed for engineers who have gained a minimum of four years post-college work experience in their chosen engineering discipline. And that is a quote directly from the NCEES, which stands for the National Council of Examiners for Engineering and Surveying. They are the ones who administer the test and the certification. What is the format and what are the requirements of the PE exam? That answer is going to vary based on your engineering discipline. There are different versions of the exam. Some examples are below. Regardless of your discipline, most exams are around 80 questions in 8 hours, so it's a whole day affair. Some versions of the exam are computer-based, they call that CBT, and others are taken on paper. In order to take the PE exam, you must first pass the Fundamentals of Engineering exam. You must also have four years of professional experience working as an engineer. How does the scoring for the PE exam work? Your score is based on the total amount of correct answers, with wrong answers not subtracting points. At least that's what I found for the computer-based exams. Your score will be converted to a scaled score. The scaled score adjusts for question difficulty so that all different exam scores are leveled appropriately. How is that scale determined? Well, it's determined by subject matter experts through psychometric statistical methods. So there is some sort of method to the madness. So you and your friend could be taking the same engineering exam, but you could have different questions. You could have gotten more wrong, but if your questions were more difficult, the ones you got right could allot you a higher score, meaning you did better than your friend who got more correct but had easier questions. The passing score each year is not published, so I do believe that it varies. NCEES does not have a predetermined percentage of examinees that should pass or fail, which is good. Your results will be available in about a month, and pass rates are anywhere between 50 and 90% generally. The bottom picture shows what your results look like, so it's a pretty interesting graphic. You can see it will break it out into each category of exam question, and then that bar graph on the right will show where the average score was, and then how you compare to that, with the distance between showing up with a certain color. You can also see the number of questions in each category, so it's not necessarily like the questions are spread evenly among all the categories. So in this example screenshot, mathematics had 11 questions, whereas engineering economics just had three. So what do you get if you pass the exam? Well, first and probably most importantly, you have much better eligibility for jobs. Many jobs require that you are a PE. But also, at the jobs, you have more responsibility. As a professional engineer, you can be responsible for higher caliber work. Also, in some jurisdictions, only a licensed engineer may prepare, sign and seal, and submit engineering plans and drawings to a public authority for approval, or seal engineering work for public and private clients. So depending on the industry you're in, it could be more of a requirement for your career and less of a bonus. Also, in some jurisdictions, it is required to teach engineering. So if you eventually think you might be a professor someday, you'll need to be a PE. So how do you prepare to take the PE exam and pass? And what are some good resources? Well, you should work under a PE for four years. I think this might be a requirement, but it was kind of hard to find whether that was still the case or not. But regardless, working under someone who is already a PE will help you prepare for the exam and understand the processes. You want to study a few hours a day for at least a month before you take the exam. Book a time and check for example syllabi and questions and practice books on the official NCEES website. And I have two links down there below. And last but definitely not least, be passionate about your studies. 
and this applied more to my fundamentals of engineering exam video. I said in that video, if you're a college student and you're not really liking engineering, you can switch types or change majors. I think it's a lot more important that we have people in the world who are passionate and interested in what they're doing than people who just think something is a good career. Hopefully at this point, if you've been an engineer for four years, you know that it is something you want to keep doing. But if not, it's never too late to go do something else. I did it. You can do it. Thank you so much for watching this Principles and Practice of Engineering exam video. I hope you now understand what the PE exam is, what the format is like, what the requirements are, and what you can do to better prepare for it. If you like this video, feel free to subscribe. I come out with a video about once a month on a variety of engineering topics. Have a great day!